there's some interesting genetic research. We won't get into that yet, but let's look at some of some of the quotes from Plato's Timaeus and Critias. Poseidon, receiving for his lot the island of Atlantis, begat children by a mortal woman and settled them in a part of the island which I will describe. Looking towards the sea, but in the center of the whole island, there was a plain, which is said to have been the fairest of all plains and very fertile. And Poseidon, Poseidon himself set in order with ease, as a god would, the central island bringing up from beneath the earth two springs of water, the one flowing warm from its source, the other cold. In the next place they had fountains, one of cold and another of hot water, in gracious plenty flowing and wonderfully adapted for use by reason of the pleasantness and excellence of the waters. So he makes repeated reference to these springs and how there was actually a, um, you know, springs that, that uh, issued from the, from the earth that, that flowed hot and cold, which is important geologically. And when we look at Furnas and Salmagil, and we see that this important geological detail is recapitulated in the modern day Azores. So here from coming from the left, we have a hot spring. And from the right up above, we have the cold spring flowing up from two distinct aquifers beneath the island, coming up, and here's the hot water flowing out, the cold water flowing out. So there's a geological, a very interesting geological detail, just as Plato describes it. Come on, there's hot and cold springs in the recat structure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there? No. Oh, oh. I don't think so. Yeah. I, that I think it's pretty dry. Pretty bone dry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it probably is. Yes. Okay. So then uh, it says that they, um, these were surrounded with buildings and with plantations of trees, such as suited the waters. Also, they made cisterns, some open to the heavens, others roofed over to be used in winter as warm baths. And we can... Um, go here and we'll share and we'll see that here's the hot springs you can see the steam rising up and just as in Plato's day they now have created cisterns where uh, people can take warm baths with the hot water naturally flowing out of the ground they have uh, they're bringing the waters down from the highlands into the plain. And if you, it, just as Plato describes, you have a mountain range to the north and a fertile plain to the south. And when we look at the southern part of the island, we, we see very fertile plain mm. leading down to the ocean. Oh, yeah. We see lakes that have very interesting legends associated with them about lost civilizations. And the idea of the two springs of water, which we just saw, and the cisterns, the hot springs that are coming up very much just like Plato described on uh, hot springs on Sal Miguel. And then he says, in making every variety of food to spring up abundantly from the soil, which is what you expect from volcanic soil. It's highly fertile. So the Azores today are very fertile and abundant food in the markets, you know, that, that grows from this volcanic soil. And whatever fragrant things uh, there now are in the earth, whether roots or herbage or woods or essences, which distill from fruit and flower, grew and thrived in that land, just as it does in the Azores today. Now, to me, this is very interesting. He describes how on the northern part of the islands where you had the, the mountain ranges, they uh, constructed a vast uh, complex of canals and aqueducts to bring the water to the south to the, to the low-lying low fertile plain, which was to the south, uh, sheltered again from the north. We saw last week how, how the, um, the, uh, the Gulf Stream wrapped right around right. the plateau region, right? 
And then again, you would have had the mountain range to the north, which would have also helped to shelter it, open to the south, which would have almost created like a, a natural passive solar collection topography. So he describes how they built a series of aqueducts to bring down the water. On Madeira, we see a system where they've basically created sort of in miniature exactly what Plato describes with these aqueducts that are called lavadas. So as it says again, quoting from Plato, of the water which ran off, they carried some to the grove of Poseidon, where were growing all manner of trees of wonderful height and beauty, owing to the excellence of the soil. They harvested their crops twice a year. In the winter season, they relied on the water of Zeus sent rains. And in the summer season, they used the water stored in the earth, drawing it into their canal system to irrigate, irrigate the crops. And this shows the modern aqueduct system on the island of Madeira, the Levadas. And they cropped the land twice a year, making use of the rains from heaven in the winter, conducting the streams from the aqueducts. That's the whole point here. And so in this particular system, this is actually now turned into be a rather a, a tourist attraction in the sense that what people do now, and I, I guess when we organize our field trip, our Atlantis field trip, we'll have to do this as well. You get a ride to the top of the mountain, you get dropped off, and then you just take a stroll or a hike or a walk down because all the Levadas have pathways along them because you have because the fact that they're using this system to bring down the water, you have to keep the, you have to keep the conduits clean and, and if there's repair work that needs to be done. But people now will walk along and if some trash or something gets in there, they'll actually take it out. And so now a lot of the tourists are actually helping to maintain the system. And you can see here how spectacular some of the uh, landscapes would be, you know, walking along the system of, of aqueducts. So the sources of this water is just like springs coming out of the mountaintops? Is that the idea? Yeah, and probably maybe some, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and rain falling on the mountains. Right. Yeah, you can see here, the, the, here's ah. the, the aqueduct here. So here's somebody, you know, walking along it. And there were many temples built and dedicated to many gods and gardens and places of exercise. So it's, in a way, kind of interesting that uh, in the Azores and Madeira today, you find almost echoes, I call it echoes, of Atlantis. And the stone, which was used in the work, they quarried from underneath the center island and from underneath the zones on the outer as well as the inner side. One kind was white, another black, and a third red. And here we can see some of the different kinds of stones making up the islands. I'm not sure of the lithology of these stones. I imagine we'd have to get samples and get them tested, but I'm sure we've got some basalts, some dark basalts, possibly some other basalts with, with a lot of iron oxides in it, perhaps some limestones. But the point is here is we have, we have rocks that are red, we have rocks that are white, and we have rocks that are black yeah. um, composing these islands. Again, as Plato described, so yes, this is this is the Azores today, and of course these are just the tops of these mountains. And if we were looking at some of what we were seeing in the last couple of weeks with the isostatic changes in the ocean floor, the eustatic changes in sea level, we might be looking at a fairly large island here with some pretty darn impressive mountains. But this is what you have in the Azores today. <laughs> I wow. mean. These are impressive valleys. Then as Plato describes, the whole country was said by him to be very lofty and precipitous on the side of the sea. And that's pretty much what we've got yep. there. Right out of the water. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Man. So, I mean, when you start getting into the details of the thing, I mean, so far what we've seen is, is his geography is consistent, his geology is consistent. His timing, his chronology is consistent. I don't think we need to go to these other places because I think the thing we started out with was showing that at one point, you know, the geological community closed ranks and said, ah, it's all a myth. It's fiction. You know, we, we, we quoted from 
uh, Atlantis Fact or Fiction. It was published, what, 77 or 78, where they declared uh, authoritatively that Atlantis was just fiction and that it was inconsistent with the geology. And so because we could rule out the geology of it, then all other considerations that might be linguistic or having to do with legends or folklore or from vegetation, any of the other things that might have been like um, part of uh, Ignatius Donnelly's 13 propositions. Remember what they did? This, the tactic was to say, well, he had 13 propositions, showing that there were these interesting linkages from, on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean, and that these linkages could all be dismissed if the geology was not consistent. So check it out. On its long side, he's describing the island of Atlantis, the main island. On its long side, it extended for 3,000 stades. And as measured from the sea, it was over 2,000 stades across. Now, a stade is about, say, 608 feet. So if you're going 3,000 uh, times that, you're looking at about 345 miles, right? Okay. So you're looking at a He's talking about an oblong here that's roughly 3,000, uh, I mean, uh, what did I say, 345 miles by roughly two, 200 and some miles. So three units long, two units wide. He's talking about the, the, the plain that was south of the mountain range. So here I've just put a box in here of that particular size that he's describing. Okay. So you've got mountain range to the north, you've got the, the plain to the south, and then you've got the seamounts here the sunken seamounts with their truncated tops. So this is actually pretty consistent with the size that he describes. So again, the, the surrounding mountains were celebrated for their number and size and beauty far beyond which any which still exist. So try to imagine what this would have looked like if the, if the whole plateau was at sea level or above. Right. This would have been a... Yeah, those mountains would have been enormously tall and then enormously tall yeah and i mean these are some of the mountains that are there today and these are just the the tops of the mountains right. God. having them in them also many wealthy villages of country folk these are some of the towns wow here's to say to share a So when do we get the plane tickets? This yeah. is uh, too tempting here. <laughs> Damn, so, I want to go. Ah, uh, yeah. Here's another Levada, another one of the aqueducts. <clears throat> Looks like a pretty awesome place, doesn't it? it does. Mike, buy the plane tickets tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving tomorrow on a plane. I know. So, <laughs> so now, oh, okay, here, here's another interesting detail that, that Plato describes. He says, in the sacred precincts of Poseidon, there were bulls at large, and the ten princes hunted after the bulls with staves and nooses, but with no weapon of iron. So what I've got here is a picture of the capturing bulls for sport on Tershira today, which is a regular thing they do, with nooses and staves and using no weapons of iron. So that's why I call this like Echoes of Atlantis. Echoes. Is this the Spanish province? P Portugal. Portuguese, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is the Canaries. And interestingly, on the Canaries, we find stepped pyramids. And here's an example of, of an ancient stepped pyramid. And I have no idea how old these things are. I haven't been able to find any studies on them yet. But you see this, the these step pyramids on the Canary Islands, which would have been the most, uh, the closest cluster of islands to the Azores Plateau. So if you had a maritime culture centered on the, the main island there at, at, at the Azores, in the region of the Azores, the Canaries would have been outlying islands that would have been immediately accessible to any culture that had any kind of maritime capabilities and navigational skills at all. And then we see exactly the same kind of step pyramids in Sicily. Step pyramid in Sardinia. And we'll save this for our next one. When we talk about the city plan of Atlantis, I'll save this uh, for, along with the discussion of the recat structure.
and this is interesting in itself, but I think we'll, uh, we'll again, we'll save that.